uh, white balance set for the kind of lighting you take it under so it looks the way it's supposed to look. Right? And you can create your own materials, and I'll show you how to do that in a couple of minutes. When you apply materials to your objects in your model, you've got really two different ways of applying materials. You can take the material like I did and just drag and drop it onto the object, or you can apply materials by layer. If you're very careful about the way you create your model, all your countertops on one layer, fine. Just assign a granite material to the countertop layer. But if you weren't as careful when you created layers, then you're going to drag and drop materials onto the actual objects. So let's look at that. So if I drag and drop the material, and I happen to have some uh, terracotta, so we'll drop some terracotta on the floor, and it changes the floor to terracotta. Right? I can drag and drop my granite onto my countertop. I can drag and drop my, my granite onto my countertop. If you do it that way, you're going to find yourself dragging and dropping an awful lot. If all my countertops on one layer, it would be a whole lot easier to just put the granite on the countertop layer and be done with it. If I drag and drop a material onto an object, it goes on all parts of that object. That means the people on the other side of my apartment are looking at my ugly wallpaper. <laughs> okay, so I probably don't want to do that. So if you only want the material to, uh, to be applied to one face of the object, instead of dragging and dropping it onto the object, do a control drag and drop. So let's remove that material that we just put in there. And now when I drag and drop, I'm going to hold down the control key and drag and drop onto the face of the wall. When I do that, now when I look at the other side of the wall in the adjacent apartment, I don't have the same material applied to the wall out there. So handy tip to know because you know, I like applying the material to the object, but sometimes you only want it to go on part of the object. I can also attach the material by layer. And when you attach it by layer, you're going to get this dialog box. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see a list of all the materials in the model. So those are the materials in the upper portion of your material palette. On the right-hand side, you'll see the layers. And all you have to do is drag and drop from the left-hand column to the right-hand column. And you have applied materials to the layer rather than the object, except for one thing. If you've already dragged and dropped materials onto the object, material by object overrides material by layer. So I just applied a material to my floor, and the floor didn't change. I need to go back and remove the material from the object before the material that was applied to the layer will be visible. OK? So keep that in mind when you start applying material by layer and wonder why you didn't see a change in your model. If you applied material by object first, that's going to override anything that you applied by layer. So we can also modify these materials the same way we were able to modify lights. Now I've got this material palette, and I can go out and modify the properties of any of the materials. I can change the color. I can change the image. I can change the glossiness, the highlight, the reflectivity, the transparency. I can create cutouts. Okay, I can make this look like it's self-illuminated, so I can create neon lighting if I want by just creating a material that has luminosity to it. And I can also apply things like bump maps and texture maps. So how, most of the materials that you'll find in AutoCAD are created by simply taking a photograph of the actual material. But if I take a photograph of brick, it's going to look like a photograph of brick. right? But if I then take that same photograph and convert it to a grayscale, now I can save that grayscale image of the same brick as a separate JPEG or, or uh, TIFF or PNG file and use that as a bump map. And now that's how AutoCAD gets the effect of the brick actually having a rough surface and the mortar joints being slightly recessed from the face of the brick. So if I select any material in my model, right, I can no longer modify the materials in the Autodesk library. It's a safety factor. I can create my own materials and modify them. What I'm doing now is I'm opening up that material only in the context of the current drawing. So any change I'm making here 
won't affect the material library. It's only going to affect the material as it's applied inside this drawing. So I'm free to experiment and do whatever I want. I'm not affecting the library itself. But now I can change any aspect of the material. And I may jump ahead. So there's that bump map. Sixty minutes just isn't going to be enough time here. Let's jump ahead. Okay, so let's look at some things that we can modify in here. I can change the position. I can change the rotation. I can change the scale. That's something that you're probably going to find yourself doing a lot. If the material is too big or too small, you just go in and change the scale of the material. And you can also set how that material repeats. Right? Does it simply tile or does it mirror and flip? as it tiles so that all your edges match. And one thing to note is that you can link the texture transformations. If you link the transformations and you're changing the scale of the material and it's got a bump map or a texture map associated with it, you want to make sure that the bump map and the texture map change scale as well. Right? Otherwise your mortar joints are now no longer going to line up with your brick. So if you start changing scale, make sure that you select that checkbox so that anything else that's being used to adjust the appearance of that material also makes the same change that you've just made to the position or the scale or the rotation. So if I want to change, for example, the alignment, the orientation of my floor, I can go out and edit that. And then if I expand this panel and edit the image that is being used to create that floor, I now get this third panel. And in my transforms, I can go in and I can adjust. Now, I do want to make sure that I link that, because anything I do here, I want it to affect anything else that's driving the appearance of that material. And now I can change the scale of that. I can change the repetition. And I can also change the rotation. So let's drag that over a little bit. and You'll see the floor rotate, right? because I'm changing the rotation of the material. You can also just select the material and rotate it. But I can change it right there in the material definition. and then we can close out of all those. And I'm going to jump ahead. OK, so these materials are actually made up of, or most of the materials are made up of texture maps. We've got an, an image of the material, and then we might have a bump map that gets added to that. We might have a, a reflectivity map if the object actually reflects its surroundings. I can have a cutout map, and I'll show you in a minute how, where the cutout map can be really useful. That basically says anything that's white is opaque, anything that's black is transparent. So here's where I can take those old landscape objects that used to come in AutoCAD that aren't there anymore. Right, I had trees. Well, I, if I've still got those trees, I can still use those files. I've got an image on the left of the tree itself, and I have a cutout map of the tree on the right. Anything that's white will be opaque. Anything that's black will be transparent. So I'll be able to place a tree in the model and see through the leaves, see around it. Or I can create a, a sign for my hotel. So I've got the image of the letters themselves, which is the kind of goldy yellow image. And then I've got a cutout map. Again, where it's white, it's going to be solid. Where it's black, it's going to be transparent. And that's how I'm able to make this look like individual letters on my brick wall. OK, so I've I'm going to create a new material and put it in my custom material library. OK, so it's going to be a generic material. And I'm just going to go out onto my hard drive and find those two JPEG images that I created. We'll give this thing a name, because I'm creating a new material. I can give it a description so I can remember what I create, why I created it, what it's used for. 
and then we'll go out onto the hard drive and I've got a hotel sign full color bitmap and I've got a hotel sign black and white bitmap. I'll use the full color one for the image. All right, so that's the one I, and I notice I called it grand I so I know that that's the image version. And then I've got another one that I called grand O. It used to be called an opacity map, that's why I called it O, now they call it a cutout map. So maybe I should save it to grand C. But I simply find those and I bring them in. Let's go find the cutout map. I get my preview image, which doesn't help me a whole lot. I can change the preview image onto a cube if I want. But if I drag and drop that on there, now the scale is wrong, the repetition is wrong, but now you already saw how we go to fix that, right? I just go right back out to my image controls and we'll go out and edit the image that we were using and in the transforms area, first of all, lock the transformations in case there's other stuff that's being controlled. I'll change the sample size, I know how big that is. I don't want it to scale one by one. I actually want it to be three feet long and one foot high. Right? So, or, I'm sorry, 12 feet long. So we'll adjust the size, because that's how big I created those letters. They're four foot high letters. So we'll adjust that. And I don't want it to tile. I want it to just appear one time. There's what it looks like. I've mapped it onto a solid, a thin solid. But when I render it, the solid's going to go away because of that cutout map. The black part disappears. OK, so it looks like one inch raised letters attached to my brick wall. So that's a pretty cool effect. I can do the same thing with trees. Right? So what I did here is I added the sky as a background. And then I'm going to bring in, some, I'm going to bring in that sign and just drag and drop that sign onto the front wall because we just created that as a new material. I've got people that I created the same way. I've got photos of people and then a cutout map so that you can see around the people. I did the same thing with the trees and mapped them onto a thin solid. Okay, I've got lights that I already placed in this model. I've also got sunlight turned on. And if I select those lights, you can see where they are because you'll get the little glyph will appear. And now if I render this scene, oh, let's go ahead and attach some materials, because right, I've got a few layers that don't have materials attached yet. So we can drag and drop those materials. Let's render the scene. So those trees cast real shadows because the black part disappears, but AutoCAD will cast shadows based on what was white. And you can kind of see what's going on in the model. This is not a presentation quality, so when I zoom in, parts of it are kind of pixelating. But if we, oh, let's, let's see, switch to a different view. And again, my lights are on different layers, so if I switch to different views, I can have the lights automatically turn themselves off. But unfortunately, that sky background, because it's part of that view, I need to set that view current and make sure then that I turn my background off. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bright blue sky, even though it's nighttime. Make sure my, all my lights are turned on now. Make sure my sun is turned off, because I don't need the sun shining at night. So we'll just select all those, go over to the property palette, make sure we turn all those lights on. Now I can render the scene. Yeah, turn the sun off. And now I've got the model illuminated only by the lights that I placed in the model. So I've got some lights down on the ground shining up. And I've got lights inside shining out. I went ahead and saved this a couple of different ways. Oh my, 
mouse isn't working. Okay, so there's where we started. Right? They're mapped onto these thin solids. But when I render, I get this nice rendering. The trees are disappearing because of the cutout map. Render it at night, and I've got my lights. Save a slightly different view, and I can have a rendered elevation. Or my rendered elevation at night, just by changing my vantage point and turning some lights on and off. OK, AutoCAD has another type of material called procedural maps. This uses mathematics to create different types of effects, like checker, marble, wood, a speckle, which is great for granite, uh, tiles, weave, or waves. And I particularly like the waves. So here's a, this is a really simple model. I model the swimming pool. There's really only about five different solids here. I've got a, a, a wedge. Right? It's just a solid wedge. That's the body of the pool itself. It's not hollow, just one solid object. OK, I've got another model that's the pool deck. It's just a, a, a box, a thin box. And I subtracted the pool out of it. OK, and then the, uh, the ladders and the, the uh, diving board are just some simple boxes. Or the, the, uh, the pipe rail is just a circle extruded along a 2D polyline. And I've attached some materials to this. And let's render it. And you know, it, it kind of looks good, but the, uh, the water in the pool certainly doesn't look that realistic. So what I can do is go back in and modify the material. And I'm going to use one of these procedural maps for the material. And I'm going to use that wave map. And I'm going to use the wave map both for the material itself and also for a bump map. All right, I'm just going to go out. AutoCAD already came with a, with a material that's going to work pretty good. We'll just drag and drop that on there. All right, and if I render it again, it starts to look like pool water. You start seeing ripples in the pool. You can see the bottom of the pool, even though that's a solid. All right, you can kind of see the, the ladder as it goes in and the light refracts on it a little bit. If I want, I can go in and modify that. Now I'm modifying the version that's inside my drawing, so I don't have to worry. We'll make it even wavier. A right? bunch of swimmers just got out of the pool. Go ahead and render that one. So the pool's got a lot more waves in it now. And you can see that light refracting down through the surface of the water onto the bottom of the pool. And I went ahead and saved off a real high-res version of that. Oh, I keep forgetting my mouse isn't working. Let's try this again. Oop. Oh. Sorry. It's not, gonna, it's not coming up. Let me show you how you create your own materials real quickly. I took a photo of my kitchen tile floor. And then it's just going to tile. So I select one tile. Here's how I did this. Just take my digital camera, take a picture, open that picture up in some kind of paint program, and just clip out one tile. Make sure you get it fairly square, so you want to be pretty straight down on it. Save that out as a tile. Size it. Make sure you've got the size of it approximately correct, so that when you then place it in your model, it's accurate. I'll go ahead and save that out as a JPEG image. And then I'll create a new material inside of AutoCAD and simply import that JPEG image I just created. So let's go create a material. It's a generic material, because all I'm going to be bringing in is that image map. Give it a name, give it a description. Go out and find the image that I just saved. I can map it onto a cube so that I can make sure that it's actually working properly. Drag and drop it onto the floor. There's my tile. It's, if it's too big, just go in and adjust the scale of it so that the size that it's appearing in your model is the actual size of the material that you photographed. But that was pretty much real time. It doesn't take long to do this. 
And we'll go into kind of a top view so you can see how that maps in. It looks like the floor tile. Right? We're not going to talk about aesthetics here. <laughs> you can do the same thing with other types of materials. Right? AutoCAD will try to map your materials onto the types of objects you place them onto. Sometimes it doesn't quite get it right, so you can adjust the mapping. So we're going to have planar mapping, box mapping, spherical mapping, or cylindrical mapping. So as a neat little experiment, I said, let's see if I can you know, take this Trader Joe's coconut milk and map it onto a can. So I scanned it in with my Epson scanner. I just peeled the label off, scanned it in. Inside a paint shop, I just clipped it properly, saved it. I created a 3D model of a can inside of AutoCAD just as a solid cylinder. Create a material. Give it a name. We'll call it coconut milk. Go out and find that material that I just, that, that image that I just created out in paint shop. Bring it in. It doesn't quite look right because we've got to adjust the transformations. So we'll try to get the scale and everything adjusted. And we'll drag and drop it onto it. And it still doesn't look right, because AutoCAD didn't get the mapping correct. OK, so we can adjust the mapping of the material. We'll make sure that AutoCAD is truly using a cylindrical mapping. So it's going to wrap that label around the cylinder. Uh, now it's wrapping it, but the scale is wrong. So now I'll go back out to the transformations and adjust the scale of that material. But being able to preview this, because we've got this realistic visual style, I can immediately see when I get it right. Right, so it's still not quite there, so let's adjust the scale a little more. And again, once I get it right, I'm going to see it. The can's going to look just right. There we go. Right, adjust the height a little bit. That's better. Right. So that, that kind of looks like that original photograph of the can. Let's render it and see, see what we get. Kind of looks like that first photo, doesn't it? All right, so this, once you get into the swing of doing this, it's, it's pretty easy. All right, you really can go out and create your own materials. It works, it works pretty good. With the planar mapping, if I want to rotate my floor, I can also just modify the map for that particular object and then use my gizmo and rotate the floor. So now we're, we're not changing all of the floor material. We're just changing the floor material on that one object. We're changing how it mapped onto that particular object. That's it. Wow, we squeezed it into 61 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with this. You know, I hope that you see these tools are actually getting easier to use. Our machines are getting faster, right? I can create renderings now in AutoCAD that are going to rival the stuff that I can create in other programs. Please remember to fill out your evaluation forms. This is how you get a chance to feedback. Hopefully, I did satisfy what you were looking for in this class this morning. Uh, but we definitely want you to give us feedback, because that's how we try to improve these classes year after year at AU. Now, as you're leaving, don't leave yet, because as you're walking out the door, everybody's going to get one of these cards. I mentioned at the beginning, I just went to work for 4D Technologies CAD Learning. We do video-based training. All those videos that you saw that were playing so I could walk around and talk and not have to run the computer, if you want to see more lessons like that narrated, we've got over 10,000 video tutorials on 18 different Autodesk products and you've all just gotten 30 days of free access to every single one of them. Is that cool? OK, so make sure you grab one of those on the way out the door. And if you've got, I'll stick around and answer questions for 15 minutes or so till the next speaker comes in. If you don't get your question answered or if something comes up afterwards, please feel free to email me. I mean that. You know, you guys, I, I feel like this is an extension course. If you leave here and a week later you got a question, 
email me. I love hearing from students from CAD camps and AUs. So thanks so much for being here today.